What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode 283, almost didn't have it, of Opinions May Vary. I'm your host, JR, and my co-host with me, Alex. Hello. Hey, man. Hi. You know, joining us this week is, this one's this one's kind of special for me, because one, it's like, it was unexpected, and now, then it was like hinted, and I was like, oh, I'd really like for that to happen, <laughs> and then it was almost like, oh, it's probably not, it's just probably not going to happen. It's yeah, probably not, yeah. it's not going to happen. Logistics. Just, yeah, exactly. Yeah. They they just weren't lining up and I, I I get it we're on you know limited time frame but um uh, now we're hyping you up maybe even more nervous it's great but uh, a lot of hype joining us uh, this week is um I'd I'd say probably our new best friend um, <laughs> is is our is is uh, is Sinead Sinead Spellman hey guys how are thanks you? oh my god I interrupted you I'm such a piece no, of shit okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you did I needed to swallow. <laughs> but um uh Sinead and uh and Colin have been seeing each other for for some time now and uh mm-hmm. Colin obviously are very good friend um <laughs> like second now in the terms of best friends you know after after me <laughs> yeah just yeah, kidding easily, easily am I kidding but um Sinead was over visiting um mm-hmm. I had the pleasure of meeting you last February Fe- was it mm-hmm. February Jeez. yeah six months ago but that was super quick, and we went to went to a show that uh, another friend of ours, Joe, was putting on, um, uh, Steel Magnolias, mm-hmm. and then we saw the show, and then we left. So it was like, oh, hello, here's a show, goodbye. <laughs> so it was very quick, um, very short, a but uh, exactly. And now, <laughs> but now, um, Sinead is visiting us again. Um, mm-hmm. We got a little bit more time with her, and she was kind enough to sacrifice part of her vacation where she's seeing her boyfriend for the second time this third time this year <laughs> like and she's giving us this time so i gotta say thank you so much no, I'm happy for to. it's uh it's gonna be rad because Sinead was also and we teased about it last week too colin brought her and colin actually mentioned it a couple a couple yeah. months ago yeah, yeah yeah um you came to boston comic-con with us yes i did and it was super neat had, had really? you ever been to a convention before never that was my first time ever by the way mm-hmm. Sinead is from Ireland yes I forgot to, to in- introduce that part it's not like she's from like Wisconsin just a, <laughs> just a few towns over yeah no. yeah yeah a couple oceans mm-hmm. one ocean one ocean <laughs> but um multiple time Seven zones hours. Yep. Um, but uh we we took Sinead to Boston with us mm-hmm. Sinead accompanied us to Boston and it was uh super fun also because Boston is one of our favorite shows one of our favorite shows one of the biggest that we go to and one of the best things to like expose our friends to um there's smaller ones that are closer but like they don't quite have the same shazam to them you know yeah yeah i mean some shows nearby could might be better to ease into Mm. boston especially this year and with the growth that boston has seen since we started going yeah it like came full circle this year because when we started going it was in the basement of the Westin, which was it's a hotel that's hotel. attached to the building that we were in. We um, we drove past it. That's yeah. the hotel you wanted to stay at. Yeah, yeah. that was the one. Uh, initially, when I was like getting the whole group going and everyone was down for it, I was like, we're gonna stay at the Westin this year because it's attached <laughs> to the convention. And I was like, no, nah, we're not staying at the Westin because it's real expensive. <laughs> Three thousand um, dollars. Pretty much. <laughs> and uh, at the first year we went, it was in the basement of the Westin. We actually waited in line out front of the bcec didn't mm-hmm. even know what that building was at the time because we'd never been in it yep and then for, it was at the heinz for a couple of years and then it was at the western sea uh, the or the uh seaport for uh three, three or four, years man. three or four years four. and then they exactly three to four <laughs> and then they grew out of that uh very quickly like especially last last two years it was packed mm-hmm. um and then this year they moved to the bcec which is the giant building where pax happens and other enormous events um so I was super pumped because I was like, oh, "Cool, they're gonna they're addressing the crowding issue." Can we get to that later? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll definitely have time. I don't want to. I don't want to start with that one. <laughs> so new venue, um, and it was, I was really anxious, really anxious. It was the most I've been excited for Boston in years. Mostly, it was also because like the whole gang was going to be there. Mm-hmm. Plus, Sinead was going to be joining us, so we got to see like introducing someone to it again it's mm-hmm. been a while since we've like had that like hey look at this thing that we all love every year <laughs> and that's always fun isn't it yeah so. and it was like the original gang too because yeah. there was a year where we didn't have colin or we didn't have joe or we didn't have brett or yeah because brett was there last year but he was working yeah yeah um joe had to miss out because he was in a show 
um is yeah we had like the core mm-hmm. and Colin was saying too how it was the most easy going of the years everyone was super chill yeah yeah that's nice yeah mm. I mean I was still pretty intense well, but you left pretty quick <laughs> I, I was waiting to see that too. that was that was a record <laughs> for how long Alex actually stuck around I couldn't yeah. believe it because <laughs> like we had split up a little bit mm-hmm. uh to get in line because right. going through like bag check and and wanding you down and everything with the with you guys had props checks. those guys, guys ditched had, us yeah we told 100 percent, 100 percent ditch and i was jo- like okay. jojar and brett just like got through metal sector and just took <laughs> off because we didn't have props but uh but colin and sinead were cosplaying so they had did you have props you didn't i had a bag cos- to search like uh, two bags right yeah yeah. yeah 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 but there were props that had to be checked so uh we um shamelessly bailed and uh, got even though you guys got into the show before, before us, us. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. like Which they, I thought was funny. <laughs> they they line us up in like the the big individual lines similar to PAX. Um, if you've w- ever waited in the queue at PAX, and uh, we were in ten, and they were, we're in 11. eleven. But you mm-hmm. we were toward we're like the, the back, back end of ten. <laughs> We're in the front <laughs> and of you 11. guys are in the front of eleven. So like, Ted was like halfway in, and they're like, "All right, send the next one." Yeah, and we start walking. Fuck? Like, oh, are we supposed to? Nope. Let's just go. <laughs> Yep. So despite our our uh, our hubris and just ditching you guys, <laughs> our, it came back to bite I was just us. Like, oh hey! It's uh. <laughs> <laughs> so, like we got through the door and we start walking in. Um, mm-hmm. I do want to say, the the wristband check staff, at least on Saturday, a lot of fun. Yes. Because uh, other shows will have lanyards and your and your badge has to hang and you mm-hmm. have to face it forward because they got to make sure they could read what day it is or if it's a three day pass or make if sure it's you're not pro. sneaking in. Right. Yeah. Whereas here they just, they just like raise your arms. And there's one dude who's like wristband, wrist like doing like finger guns the whole time, and like wristband, wristband, have a good show, you know. And like the next guy was like a little older, but trying to do the same thing. And like I appreciate his energy, and like they're making it kind of fun. They, one guy they, was they, just they, like, they, I got you, I got you, I got yeah, you. Yeah. Like it was awesome. <laughs> Compared to sometimes like the security guys or you know the badge checks could be like kind of angry about it. Like show me your wristband, <laughs> like angry. It's like yeah. I'm right here. My sleeve fell. I'm sorry. I'm, I'll fix it. And then but, there was our first year at PAX where we walked the entire floor. In we got into the building, walked the entire floor like twice, looking for lanyards. So our badges were not visible <laughs> at all the entire time. We're like in my pocket. <laughs> but. We could not find lanyards that year. Yeah. We also they also brought us in like the side entrance where yeah. we came mm-hmm. in for Boston. Yeah. Right. Um. We had to go around to the front entrance, yeah. like up on the lobby. No, and like we had never been in that building before, so mm-hmm. had no idea where we were, but <laughs> that was a fun time. Uh, so traditionally, as soon as we enter Boston or New York or some big show like that, that's a, a good size. The comic heavy A ones. nice artist alley. Yeah. Uh, I bolt right. for artist alley to go try to get in line for bolt sketches. Bolt isn't even or... an exact. It's like, if anything, it's putting it lightly. Instant like, transmission to the Alex, artist alley. <laughs> Alex, like thrusts himself he what's another what was it? it's just it's it's instantaneous it's like okay we're all we're moseying in oh we're all here we're all great <laughs> and then it's okay bye and then he's just gone um, there was a year brett was shocked that he couldn't keep up with me while, I'm, while I'm carrying my messenger bag and my portfolio i have bag. very sh- i have very short legs so i just know it's a lost cause for me <clears throat> Because we were like bonding in the queue, me, you, yeah. Colin, and yeah. then la 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 bonding, and then next minute gone. <laughs> <laughs> so we got in, like we're walking through the aisles and like some of the vendor booths mm-hmm. and everything, and and like you guys are looking around and taking it in. Right, it's your first one, and I'm like, kind of like angrily pacing, <laughs> about to explode. Because <laughs> I was like, because yeah. you did hang on for a little few minutes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You, so. We got like four minutes. Yeah. Of that, well, I didn't want to <laughs> abandon you right away because like. The rest of the guys that ba- that ditched us hadn't shown up yet. Hey, hey, shut up! <laughs> and I, I wasn't about to ditch you. And uh, and so like I'd take like four hurried steps, then be like, "Oh, they're back there." So I'd stop and wait. <laughs> and then, then you guys would catch up, and I'm like, "All right, cool, let's go." And then I just stop and wait. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's fair. Uh, but once once uh you know Joe and Jaron and, and Brett mm-hmm. showed up, I was like, "I can't do this anymore." <laughs> you showed a lot of restraint. Thanks. I respect I that. Tried. I tried. Respect that. Got a lot of signatures. Did you accomplish so, everything that you set out to do? I didn't. As a, let's see. <laughs> I'm going to say like as an experienced veteran of mm-hmm. like wanting to meet artists and get their signatures on the books that I own because I collect a lot of books or I want to buy their art or I want to get sketches or something. At some point, you got to know when to give up because <laughs> I've gotten, 
I've gotten a bunch of David Finch in the past. Like David Finch, major artist. Uh, his wife is doing a lot of writing now. Mm-hmm. And so I brought some of their books. But seeing like the line that he had, I realized I'm going to use up a lot of my available time if I get in line and wait for him. That's a one day show. And for like, us. Yeah, we were only doing mm-hmm. the one day. If we had like three days, then I would have. Oh, brought, yeah, easy. You got to parcel that stuff. out. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so I just gave up on all my Finch's books. We parked close enough where I could make it to the car and back a few times, because mm-hmm. I, we have a, a thing of not being the guy who brings the the rolling luggage in. Right. You don't bring your box. And People your little will bring truck. in like a comic box like that, like sometimes stacked like that on a hand truck. Mm-hmm. Just full of books to, for I people to anything. sign. I don't yeah, think I there wasn't. That. I saw a couple. There weren't okay. too many though. Also, if you had one, you'd be you'd be out of luck too because we'll get to that. <laughs> <laughs> we we don't like those people. No. Okay, well, like, uh, if you're walking, if you're if you go to college or walk through an airport and someone has like the mm-hmm. rolling luggage next to them, right? If they were carrying it, then they're still only going to take up the space of their person. Mm-hmm. But now that they have, they're towing something next to them and behind them, they're taking up the space of two persons. True. And I can't walk past them now because I'm in a hurry and There's I've got also, places to be. And it also comes down to the thing that we've discussed at length previously where, and it's not, a, it's not all of them. Some people just have a lot of stuff. Maybe they don't have a car. Maybe they took the bus in. You know, right. I, mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. Okay. But a lot of those people who have those cards are the type of person who will go up to an artist and slap down 50 books and just right. be like, sign them. Thank you. Okay, bye. And even you you might get a thank you. You know, it's just mm-hmm. I'm I'm exploiting your signature either for my own personal gain or, you know, so I can either uh, brag to my friends that I have 30,000 of your books signed <laughs> uh, or I can, so I can sell them. Yeah. Um, and we've, we've discussed our, our disdain for uh, – we need to come up with a name for them, just like we stack do. slammers. <laughs> <laughs> But that's why we'd see a lot of uh, artists that would start charging for signatures, right? which yep. is where that came in, because people would come in and want to get a ton of books signed, oftentimes like 20 of the same book, because mm-hmm. you know they're just going to want to sell it. It's not for them. Right. So some people will charge for the signature and others. What was his name? I don't know. Was it the others? sign a couple of books and then mm-hmm. there's $2 afterwards? There were some of those. Um yeah. Uh, Matthew Clark was doing a thing. Him and the, and the guy next to him were doing signatures five dollars, personalized, free. Right. Mm-hmm. So I held up my Inhumans issues and I was like, "I would like these personalized, please." And he's like, "Sure, thing." You know, he was fine with it. And then like I take him out and I put him down. I was kind of doing something else. He was kind of chatting with somebody, and he looks at me and goes, uh, "And I go, Alex, A L E X. Tell him <laughs> what name I want to personalize to, because mm-hmm. now I can't sell a book." Right. With my name on it, mm-hmm. that's silly. Well, you can. It's just a, it narrows down your. your there, there's your not as many prospects. Considerably. <laughs> <laughs> to all Alexes. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Is your name Alex? Because you're in luck. It can uh, be. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you know, um, and other artists like seeing a book that's like well loved. Mm-hmm. Like if it, if it's got creases in it and it's been read right. a bunch of times, like they know, like that's to keep. That's that you've had that since you were ten or something like that. Right. They dig it. Um, Whereas, like, when they have the, when they're very, like, pristine and mint, or they, you'll cut I t- out. I taped off my section. <laughs> you'll cut out a hole in the bag to show them where you want them to sign it. Because the book is, like, a mint condition book, because then you're going to get it graded. Maybe. Who knows? But going into the show, I, I want to mm-hmm. know, like, did you have, like, did you lurk the website? Was it, because I, like, I'm not sh- I actually don't know, like, if you're. Like, if you're a comic person, have you read comics in the past? Was there anything that you were looking forward to in this show? I have always wanted to go to a Comic-Con. I think it's always just been something I want to do for whatever reason. So I was very excited to get to go. I think I even said it to Colin months ago. Is there a Comic-Con on, you know, over my next (laughs) visit? And he was like, oh, Boston is on. So I think it kind of fit in nicely. Mm -hmm. No, I didn't do a lot of... um, internet searching or anything i looked up what to do for a beginner at a comic con <laughs> that kind of thing but um you know i was happy to just go and see it for myself so i was super excited to go for sure and you so, cosplayed at your first con yes ever 
I wanted to do it. I was determined to do something, but I was nervous <laughs> too because I'm not normally, you know, on stage dressing up or anything. Right. So I was nervous, but I'm glad I did it. And now next year I want to go full All out. <laughs> so it was a good way to kind of start off. But no, I, it was something I wanted to do for sure. Yeah. Because you were cosplaying as as Lady Wolverine. Lady Wolverine. There, because there's a See? there's a name for it that we had. Yeah, yeah. but I wasn't sure. To say <laughs> it or not. <laughs> oh yeah, because you guys got to come name. up with the with the creative. Uh, now is that that's crossplay, correct? If she was no, Wolverine, it's gender, that's gender bent. bent. God, yeah. I can what? never get it. Yeah, Gen- there's, there's crossplay mm-hmm. and gender bent, cosplay. gender bending. Okay. So like you were. So, so you when can... I was Rogue, right? right? So I was dressed as Rogue from the X Men, mm-hmm. but as a dude, or as right. how I mm-hmm. would dress if I was Rogue. Um, so like I was still dressing like a guy, mm-hmm. but like wearing a similar outfit and like calling myself Rogue. Mm-hmm. That's gender bent <laughs> cosplay. Okay. If I was gonna be Rogue, like for real, for sure, then I'd wear like the the tight outfit with the heels and like do my <laughs> hair better and put on better makeup. Okay. So then I'd be cross-dressing or cross-playing cross-playing right okay, yeah. I see. Yep. Yep. okay yep so you wanted to look like a man yeah okay yeah right right i can't walk in heels i mean i haven't tried but <laughs> i'm not here to know. probably <laughs> there probably are no can't. judging no <laughs> this is a <laughs> judgment-free zone we're a planet fitness here i'm i the the, the rogue like original outfit isn't flattering on me so have you tried it on i haven't <laughs> you I'm have just, I'm, just, <laughs> I'm just gonna assume we're just my, gonna... my baggy pants version is much uh, much more socially Free. acceptable. <laughs> yeah, that too. But uh, Colin was uh, was Jubilee. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if he was actually calling himself Jubilee. I think I heard that a few times. Yeah, that's that's what we were all just kind of forcing upon him. <laughs> and um, I can't remember who because it, it's up for debate on who mm-hmm. coined the term for for Sinead's Wolverine. I think it was Joe. Was it ever? Yeah, a lot of people say Joe. Joe. But yeah, it was he Joe. Comes um, I think so. Ones. So it was Wolverine. Did you? <laughs> Bulba is a perfectly okay <laughs> word. <so good. laughs> just, uh, just the most brilliant um, yeah. uh, cosplay ma- mashup name. Because so. that's who I told people at home I was going as. I was like, Wolverine. I <laughs> 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 thought it was brilliant. So, <laughs> um, so did, like, were you were you and Colin stopped for pictures at all or anything like that? No, I got into the hall and I was cold, genuinely. So I put <laughs> on my sweatshirt, but I was like, oh, I'll get a picture later. I think the idea of people coming up asking me p- for pictures scared me. Because right. I was like, oh, God, I'm not ready. I'm not ready. Because <laughs> yeah. Alex had said, oh, you'll get stuff for pictures. And I was like, oh, God, because I can barely pose for a picture you know if my sister takes it so i don't <laughs> so i did not get asked for pictures it, right, right. But i'm gonna get into it later but part of it was that like mm-hmm. it wasn't exactly a picture friendly uh yeah area yeah it was yeah. so busy because it was so busy I, and it was yeah. crowded and like yeah. even at like a bigger show like you'll still kind of feel bad if you stop in the middle of an mm-hmm. aisle way you know yeah. like spread out like oh mm-hmm. back up so you, then you put and people can't get by you now Whereas at this show, like that was never going to happen. I think so. I didn't but. see many people getting stopped, even yeah. the yeah. really, really detailed costumes. I saw a couple, and then it was awkward because they were holding up the queue behind mm-hmm. them. Mm-hmm. So I didn't see a lot. We saw the clown Penny Rose. Is it from it? Pennywise. 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 Yeah. Oh, Penny Rose. Is that what I said? <laughs> 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 it's my stripper name. But um, <laughs> but I saw Colin wanted a picture with him. But uh-huh. that's about. Oh it. yeah, he got like a little mm-hmm. video of that. Get the video, video of it. Yeah. That was good. Video. It was yeah. terrifying. <laughs> very, very terrifying. So, like, um, I'm gonna say the show was basically broken up into three parts. Mm-hmm. There was a huge like vendor area where all the people had comic books and statues right. and other items t-shirts. and the t-shirts. Mm-hmm. And then there was the artist alley area where like most people who actually make the things in front of them. Mm-hmm. And then there was the whole like autograph area with the voice actors mm-hmm. and the cosplayers and the celebrities. Um, did you have a favorite section that you liked? Yeah, I think going in there, I wanted to get a piece commissioned. I think that's what I wanted to get done. So I spent quite a bit of time walking up and down, figuring out, you know, who mm-hmm. I want to draw my piece. There was one girl, I can't remember her name, but she could only guarantee it like the day after. And I knew we'd only be there for one day. Right. So then that set me back about three hours. Okay, so so that's why I rush. <laughs> yeah, 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 right, right, right. I was... Like, like it's, it's good because you... If it's your first time yeah. and you don't know every artist there, mm-hmm. so you want to take in their work and see what they've done. Right. And if they have like other sketches kind of already laid out, 
you can take those in and like kind of see what their style is but like it takes time to do that and kind of like you know figure out like what's your your quality to dollar ratio and do, will they make right. something that that i'll be happy with yeah and so like tr- and then hoping they're not booked right at the same yeah. time mm-hmm. yeah if i found it hard to come up with something because i didn't i wasn't sure how it worked yeah you know like what do you have to come up with an idea and shoot it to them so i was walking around for about three hours thinking who do i want them to draw for me even and then I don't know. So that took up time too. Mm-hmm. So I missed a few chances. Sometimes yeah. they have a plan, and other times, like yeah. you see something they've already done, right? And you yeah. go, y- you, you know, this uh, mm-hmm. genre of something. It's like, mm-hmm. give me another one of those. <laughs> you know exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I spent quite a bit of time down there. I needed to. I think Colin was hoping to stay with me, walking around the place, while I kept. <laughs> drifting off myself i was focused i needed to get something and i needed to just be on my own just mm-hmm. for, you know so i understand how you have to do that i'm not gonna say colin mm-hmm. is scatterbrained mm-hmm. but he gets really excited by things right yeah and so he'll do a well hey look at that and like want to go over there to go check it out and you're like and on a mission <laughs> it's like no 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 <laughs> so. i haven't completed this aisle yet <laughs> that's like, true Did you see that that was dope i was like yeah i, I have to go this way though yeah <laughs> My, yeah. my my route is laid out. And then I didn't want to appear to be not supportive to him. So I was <laughs> like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, yeah, that's... it's a scary clown. Can we get away from it now? <laughs> <laughs> I need to go pick up my piece. <laughs> no, but I found there was a couple celebrities that I was a little bit starstruck by, but we didn't even meet them. Mm-hmm. So I think initially, I think Spike from Buffy was supposed to be at it. Was and he canceled. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So there was another actress from Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Was there Eliza Dushku, mm-hmm. if I'm pronouncing that right? So for me, I was shocked at how, what's the word? Everything is so close. You know, like you can see them right like I'm seeing you guys. Mm-hmm. And I just mm-hmm. found that very overwhelming. I could see I wasn't even in line. I just stood at the side. <laughs> I started bawling, crying just with, <laughs> just by being overwhelmed. I just started crying and I just stood there staring at her. Up so until that, that point, you'd only mm-hmm. seen her on a TV screen. On a TV. So it's for, like yeah. she's a real person. She's right there. And she's she looks right so much there. more beautiful. And I was just staring at her and I just, it wasn't even like, an, she wasn't my favorite character or anything like that. I just got so overwhelmed, you know, and then I started trying to take a picture and the guy told me I can't take a picture. <laughs> and I was like, okay. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. But, um, and I saw, I'm a big fan of John Barrowman too. So I saw him and he was full of energy. But then Colin asked me, he was like, do you want to wait in line and get there? And I just, no, it was enough <laughs> for me. I I think I would have just gotten too <laughs> it, nervous. It can be overwhelming. It's, yeah, yeah I was like, yeah. no, it's enough. It's <laughs> enough. I, I just saw them and it's fine. I don't know what I'd say to her. I just, no. So I'm kind of happy in a way that James Marsters wasn't there because I think <laughs> I, because I would have had to have met him. Like right, I, right. I would have, that's someone I would have had to meet. And I don't know how I would have reacted to that. And he one. he was Spike in Buffy. Spike from Buffy. So yeah. he was he has his own show too, right? No, he does not. That's Angel. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. Spike so has the comic. That's what it is. Mm-hmm. I think it's a Spike comic. Spike comic. Yeah. Yeah, but Angel is the spinoff. But he features in season five. Of right. Angel. Okay. Mm-hmm. So he's a favorite of mine. Was Eliza cool to like watch? So cool Cause, to watch. Because like. You could kind of spot oh. some of them were like, you know, they're kind of at the table mm-hmm. and they're just signing because their job is to sign. Right. And that's why they're there. And they'll shake your hands because they're being paid to shake right. their hand. Whereas like Barrowman is yeah. a fireball of energy. That was something else. Because <laughs> Eliza, like you said, she was just signing and, you know, nothing to. But well, she'll look up and smile and talk she'll to She'll smile and she'll talk. <laughs> but then you'll see Barrowman over on the other side and he's like a little kid. It's, it's he's unf- worth the money, I think. It's unfair <laughs> to compare people to John Barrowman. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but I didn't know. I was like, oh my God. And then about three hours later, we came back and he's still going, yeah. jumping up and down. I was yeah. like, that's crazy. Yeah. Barrowman is from... Uh, a couple of things. He's he's Merlin on Arrow. Mm-hmm. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah. And yep. he's also uh, Captain Jack. Torchwood is... Was that mm-hmm. like an offshoot of Doctor Who? I'm I'm not yes, good on Doctor Who. I believe Me so. Either. Yeah. So he was on Doctor Who. He was Captain Jack, mm-hmm. not Jack Sparrow. Different, different Jack. Of course, different Jack. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he, but people loved him on Doctor Who, and he's he, been um, really cool. What else on, did he do? Uh, he Arrow. also he was a judge on one of those shows. To are you familiar with West End music? It's like the Broadway of mm-hmm. London. Yeah. So yeah. there was like a competition a few years ago to find 
Maria for the Sound of Music. Mm. And it was like, a you know, televised every week. Someone would get eliminated. And he was a judge on there. Mm. And he was just wonderful. So I think that's where I first kind of saw him. Does he, did he have an upcoming on or uh, in musicals or anything? He, I think... Because I never know wrong, some stuff I, like this. Like finding out yeah. like, uh, like um, who do we have over here? Mike Rowe does like voiceovers and does a show mm-hmm. called Dirty Jobs. And yeah, like yeah. He, he does shows where he does like it's basic known for his gruff voice American, and political opinions. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like he has Dirty Jobs like, you know, he'll go work cattle farming, you know, for an episode and then go like work. You know, mm-hmm. does like really gross stuff sometimes. But like he trains as, a, as an opera singer. Mm-hmm. Did not know that. Yeah. Because there's an episode where he like he works like at a baseball field and like he not only like goes to get the mud that they rub on the ball so the ball is not like a brand new leather ball and then like he mows the field and everything and like has to prep the uniforms and whatever and then he sings the anthem and I'm like holy <laughs> hell this man could sing it's the opera yeah. dude he's got that bass yeah yeah yep. Barman is a singer a beautiful singer hmm. I'm trying to think of that song you probably know it but I'm losing it <laughs> but he has a song if you want to look it up I had no idea um, yeah. I'm sure he has more than one song. I'm sorry. <laughs> he has a song. <laughs> and that's super but, uh, like, because I imagine that can get exhausting. Mm-hmm. Like, hello, new fan. Hello. How are <laughs> you? He, yeah, how he, much he, do you love me? Thank you so much for paying me to be in my presence. Here's my signature now. Like to see that, like, because yeah. that's what it could be. And a lot of people are totally chill with that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's cool. I met this person. It was great. I got to meet him. Yeah. But like, you know, your story with with Nathan Fillion mm-hmm. and watching um, uh, Alex had to meet do you watch Breaking Bad? I did a um, few years ago you know uh, uh, Gus Gustavo Gus the, yeah yeah. Um, there's a green box cutter over there on the on the show oh yeah, yeah. is That's that from si- him? it's yeah. signed yeah oh, signed by um, Giancarlo Esposito who played mm-hmm. Gus who we met him at Hartford Comic Con which was this at the time just rinky dink it was in like the basement of the XL Center <laughs> it was hot and like there were like Giancarlo Esposito was arguably the the biggest draw there in terms of like the celebrities. If mm-hmm. there was like ten celebrities, he was the top two easily. Um, so it was yeah. like it was a small show. It it was definitely uh, not anything compared to like Boston is now. But um, and he was he was fired up. He was having a great time. Like Alex, I, I got to watch Alex. I got to take pictures of him and Alex together. Like I got to take the photo and stuff. And he was just yelling. He was clapping. He was like hooting and hollering in front of his table <laughs> more than he was behind it. Yeah, um, and like That's the same with John. Yeah. Exactly. John, we're on first. Yeah, first of name. Course, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Shane John, classic. Um, and like you know, Al- they go to take the picture, and he's like, you know, oh, can you hold the box cutter up to my throat? Like the, you know, like <laughs> that's what. Yeah, that's well. That's part of his one of his pictures. Yeah. Like, if you buy the box card, he'll sign it, and like you can take the picture with him. Um, but like while you're waiting in line, you know, because like you're behind your your taped off line, mm-hmm. you don't want to get in the way of the next person. And then he just turns around and goes, "Come on, baby, who's next?" He's <laughs> <laughs> like calling us baby and everything. It was great. Like, huge smile. But then like we go to take the picture of like in the episode where he cuts the dude's throat. Spoiler alert. He cuts the dude's throat. <laughs> and, like, you know, he holds a box over to my neck and, like, snaps into character right away. It was terrifying. Puts on the face. And, like, I thought I might die right there. Gus was, <laughs> J- Gus Fring was standing right in front of me. And it was absolutely terrifying. Like, in character. It was, but it was the craziest thing because he was just for those, like, 10 seconds while I was taking two pictures of them together. Like, he was just 100% in character. It was awesome. And is the box cutter from Breaking Bad? Is that, f- yeah. Have you it, seen? Oh, well, like, he, so, he, 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 like, he brings, like, a whole a case mm-hmm. of them. Mm-hmm. And so, like you know, twenty people could go buy him. You can pay a little bit extra, and instead of like a picture or like a right. DVD case, he'll sign the box cutter. Because he like... did, he used a box cutter in one of the episodes. Yeah. Because yeah. wasn't I telling you that I could watch a season back to back, right? And I would forget everything about it. It's just like, <laughs> yeah. and it's crazy. You're like, oh, box cutter. I'm like, what? Like I, What's... yeah, it's something it's not I'm worried Spike's about. Spike's regular jacket. What's yeah. going on here? <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's cool to see that people they they for lack of a better term they give a shit yeah you know yeah, yeah it'd make you feel good meeting yeah. someone you idolize and they just can have fun with you like that i thought it was very sweet and he was wearing these little short shorts and he just looked like a little kid and he's just oh and i just stood staring at him like until i was do. moved along you know it got dark and, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, to the lights went out <laughs> he left four hours ago ma'am <laughs> Oh. John Berman was never here. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> um, 
but like on that note to switch sides to to flip to the opposite uh end of the room um we're all the cosplayers mm-hmm. and i've seen jessica negri greet fans by name yeah mm-hmm. it's like someone will walk up and she'll you know be like cheryl and like how does she know that's cheryl cheryl <laughs> comes out <laughs> <It's> obviously <laughs> cheryl <laughs> that's funny yeah it's so like no you know like you're saying like reading a new fan whereas like she you know they'll step up and she recognizes them mm. is amazing. i can imagine that would be a great feeling for a mm-hmm. super fan yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 they I'm did sure. have the because in past years the like celebrity area it's kind of like like sectioned off, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, like oh you don't need to go in there unless you're doing but like right. this year you could just kind of walk just through walking it. through and yeah. like I said I just went up I wasn't in line and Eliza Dushku was right there and I yeah. just you didn't have to there was no barricades, <laughs> but I think that's another thing you were talking about space too like the yeah. celebrity got the celebrity section got like so much space so much free space and then yeah. everything else was clumped together but we can go back to that <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll get we'll get to that but yeah. uh i mean they they had it seemed pretty well organized and we didn't really mm-hmm. get any pictures or anything like that so we can't speak to how well it or how well that worked but like because they had a separate photo op area and mm-hmm. they, they would line you up and it's like mm-hmm. okay last call for such and such if you want a picture with whoever there's a lot like come get your whatever there was a lot of hurting yeah mm-hmm. yeah like between like the the line herds for just to get into the place and then the lines for like getting your photo op because like the photo op doesn't really happen at their signing booth they'll bring you to get like a really nice like a professional crisp. photo yeah like a backdrop right. and yeah. stuff yeah. you know so it's it was a nice area yeah i've seen that on my facebook feed mm-hmm. that kind of backdrop mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so it seemed to be it seemed to be running smoothly we can't speak too much to it because mm-hmm. none of us none of us did it <laughs> <laughs> yep but it's not like we're reporting on the show anyways. We um, were real close to almost uh, going to find um, Diva. Right. I cannot recall her name. I forgot her name. If, if, I mean, to, I, I think I mentioned this a couple weeks ago, but if there was any, any one that I would have wanted to really, it would have been Tim Curry. Because mm. um, I have, like, I mean, I've, I've grew up with Tim Curry, like Muppet Treasure Island Tim Curry. Like, that was the shit <laughs> growing up. Um, Mikhail's Navy. I just remember him in that movie, obviously. And then me and my wife and I are huge fans of Clue. Love Clue. Mm-hmm. Absolutely love that movie. And um, I was like, oh, it'd be really cool to get my, because I have the Rocky Horror Picture Show soundtrack mm-hmm. on vinyl. And I was like, that'd be neat to get him to sign the I case. I love him in that. Right. God. Yes, yeah, his yeah, yeah. intro in that movie is like top three intros mm-hmm. into Absolutely. any character ever in the history of movies. And like it just comes out and he oh, blasts man, with that song. Shivers. I'm just thinking of it right now. Right? Can that song it? is amazing. <laughs> I yeah yep, it's so and good and it actually came on in Comic Con while we were walking around and I just went <laughs> <laughs> they were doing like the shout cast of it or yeah. whatever it was like on the stage it's a very powerful song it is especially yeah. like for the like when, when did, was that the 70s I think when that came, movie I came out I believe so like it's unbelievable how long ago that very movie controversial was yeah um, I do want to say that's one of the things that breaks up um, a regular convention what Boston used to be mm-hmm. uh, compared to what it is now where the, the essentially a rebranding for being, being a fan expo mm-hmm. um yeah really i'm really curious to see if they just straight up change because like it's still on facebook it's boston comic-con yeah but it was never tagged boston comic-con it's all it's tagged there's FXB new hashtags and, it's a lot of um fan expo hashtags fan ex- for like the signs everywhere are fan expo boston my know? program doesn't say boston comic-con it says fan expo boston but i feel like more of the fan expo shows than any other comic-con shows focus on like the groups of celebrities or like you know the casts, the reunion kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So many people were from Rocky. Were there from Rocky Horror? And, yeah, a yeah. lot of Rocky Horror people. Um, a couple Doctor Who, a couple Star Wars, um, a couple like Arrow and like the Agents of Shield type thing. Mm-hmm. You know, like all the um, the TV shows. That's right. I was really close to uh, going to see Ming Na Wen, mm-hmm. who's Agent May on uh, Agents of Shield. She had a line. Did she I she had a see big it. line at one point <laughs> in the day. If people don't know what I'm pointing at. So that silver gun back there behind JR. <laughs> Just more showing off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, from uh, some of the older comic books, that's Nick Fury's needle gun. He didn't have a gun that shot bullets. He had a gun that shot needles, and that's it. <laughs> but that's like, you know, a prop replica of it. That's and sweet. it's signed by Jim Stranko, who was like one of the original artists to make Nick Fury cool. And, uh, and like there's a shield badge on there. So I considered bringing that that backdrop that that plaque 
to the show to have Agent May sign it. And and Will told me not to do it. I feel like that's the right choice. <laughs> that's 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 the right like not anything against the, the actress or, or the show or anything, but I feel like it's that was the right call. If I caught it with too many signatures, like Stranko might lose its its luster. Remember exit that, <laughs> and it lo- like it looks so clean. It does. It looks so yeah. clean, and there's also like remember um, when we were in New York in line for Doug Mock. There's a guy who had like the bat the, belt. The bat belt, yeah. Like all the smudge, just like it just. This guy had like a stand <laughs> with like a Batman utility belt on it, like, like wrapped around. It's like a everything. way of displaying a, a a utility belt. And he had like at least three hundred signatures. Oh, uh, just a it. ridiculous amount. Probably like every every person who's been associated with the Batman in the past ten years. <laughs> if 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 at one for one issue you were an editor on a Batman book or like you, <laughs> you were, were signing that belt, <laughs> you're you're the letterer for a Batman book. Like he's he's gonna make you sign it. Enough to the point where, like, he's not going to remember who everyone is. Right. Because you can't read some of those anyway. So it's just scribbles. Yeah, <laughs> yeah pretty much. <laughs> it's good. You keep it clean. Like, the the, mm. the, the Firefly one, yeah. I, I can get behind. I can yeah. get behind that. That's a, that's a, a, a big cast-heavy show. Yeah. But um, but anyways, yeah. So the, the celebrities, a lot of them there, like, I wouldn't have mind meeting Jason Mewes. That, that would have been kind of cool. If we were mm. there on Friday, mm-hmm. I probably would have wanted to meet Kevin Smith. Like right. really bad and be like, yo, come on our show. And what do you guys ask? Like, this might sound silly, but what would you say to them? Like, for me, I have a hard time. You know, I'm like, oh, if I met them, what would I say to them? I just choke up. There. That's natural. I choke up and I just, so then it's easier for me just to not meet them. I'm just like, nah, it's fine. <laughs> right? Whatever. I'll just love you from afar and that's fine. But um, I wouldn't know what to say. Hey, how are you? Big fan. Like, You're really I'm, cool. Your book's You're really dope. cool. You know, stuff My, like that. The ongoing <laughs> joke is, because I'm, I'm like that. I, um, it's rare when I will like actually be able to function in front of someone who I admire. Mm-hmm. Um, I used to rely on on Justin a lot because Justin he's just he's just a, a social butterfly. He can mm-hmm. talk to mm-hmm. anyone about anything. Oh, um, he, uh, one of those. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, a writer artist also like ha- pretty much runs parts of Image Comics. Um, Eric Larson was just like waiting for a panel. And Justin just like walks up to him and oh, is like, man. "Hey, can I get a picture?" And Larson's like, "Yeah, sure." And he had like a bag of comics for them because he was like a uh, uh, back bin diving Justin's like oh what you got and he's like oh I got some old like Marvel this and you know Gen- uh, General Rock or whatever Sergeant Rock at the time yeah, yeah and I'm like what are you doing asking the man what he it's like well oh yeah we're all fans of comics here so I guess that's a natural qu- <laughs> I'd never bother the man and ask him because but like he was completely chill and like Justin just walked right up to him but there's a uh, there's an ongoing joke um, <laughs> and I'm down with it I'm okay with it <laughs> even Charlie gets in on it um our friend Charlie from uh, he's from California um, that we met through this show, which is super neat. I uh, a couple years ago at Boston Comic Con, I think it was our second year tabling. Mm-hmm. We were one of my favorite artists uh, named Greg Capullo was there. Um, he at the time was drawing the Batman Ooh. book, and uh, he's currently back on Batman. And then he went to do. He's a really good artist, and I really like mm-hmm. him. And I waited in a long long line to meet him because um, they had like a ticket system and got to line up early and all that stuff and. Colin was there with me, like he was just kind of hanging out, and like my the the one thing that I could I could muster up to say to this man, like, hey, I really admire you. You're a fantastic artist. I really appreciate everything you do, like with comic. You got a dope book, <laughs> <laughs> is what I was able to to spew out to this this creator, and it was thanks, man. <laughs> Oh. Okay, bye. Because <laughs> um, I don't know if you're familiar here with pantomimes. Mm-hmm. They're on a Christmas, around Christmas and New Year's. So even at that, like the stars of the pantomime come out at the end and do signatures on like your program. And even then I'm just like, <laughs> oh, you're a really good prince. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's just something I'm very afraid of. So I, uh, but um, no, I'm I'm very shy when it comes to things like that. Yeah. So same no. yeah. same i just can't i've met ryan ollie half a dozen times now and every time I'm like hey, hey hello <laughs> how are you and like because he, he's just he's, he's like how what's up man how's it going and i was like <laughs> okay <laughs> and then he's like oh hey you again <laughs> yeah, exactly it's me sometimes his helper is this dude rob zeta who's been on the show and uh and rob like is a proofreader for the comic and everything and like we have easier conversations with rob who's like standing next to and behind Ryan Otley than we can possibly have with Ryan Otley. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're, we're bad at talking, but um, you're not alone in that. Is it I'm essentially dead. what I'm getting at? Like I told cause like I've never met like a, like the, 
the celebrity like mm-hmm. oh hell, i remember my first year going to new york i was so pumped to meet bruce campbell mm-hmm. but at that point i was so naive and i did not know that wait you have to pay money <laughs> <laughs> i thought it was like you just you just go and you see uh-huh. them mm-hmm. um but i've got to witness some mm-hmm. from afar and i and i watch that's people it. have conversations who are capable of having conversations <laughs> and that's fine for me i'm happy to do that <laughs> but um yeah celebrities Let's get to other things because we've been going for 40 <laughs> minutes on <in> celebrities. <laughs> what else was there? Do you want to go to artists? Well, I guess there was artists. Yeah, we can go to Artist <laughs> Alley. Right. Which was, um, and, and from what I've been seeing also on the internet, a lot of people were concerned because Artist Alley seemed a little tight. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, like when you look at the map for the, for the venue, which was in the BCEC, which was an enormous, enormous venue. Um, Artist Alley got um, not quite as much space as you'd expect. I think it still got more space without any experience of having been to other fan expo shows, right? Right. With them having taken over what Boston Comic Con is. Like, Boston Comic is an artist heavy show. Yeah. Um, and it's a better layout than like a lot of other comic shows around. Like, New York Comic Con doesn't have as good of an artist alley as Boston has. Right. There's, like, different layouts and, like, different sections where some artists are actually in uh, a small print vendor area. And then some shows that say they're Comic Con, but they have, like, 100 celebrities and, like, maybe 20 artists. Right. And, mm-hmm. But traditionally, in the past, Boston has had a very good spread of having a lot of artists. And it's been pretty um, consistent. And there are some people that I believe are still working behind the scenes who have been with Boston in the past, who like now we're kind of, I guess, consultants for the show. Um, so that's why we still saw the number of artists that were there and they're able to pull in like some big names oh, yeah. and people that like we haven't seen before for all the years I've been going to cons. I've never seen Mike Zek, who's, who's a pretty big name, you know, like hasn't turned out stuff recent, but like he made some of the most iconic comic books in, uh, th- I think the eighties, early nineties before nineties got bad. <laughs> um very early 90s <laughs> <laughs> but like it was neat seeing some of the older guys i'm not gonna pronounce his name right bob wyasek why i said joe rubenstein i've seen before like i said uh mike zack arthur adams was back and they got uh adam kubert who is huge uh-huh. which i'm surprised he wasn't like sectioned off to a different part yeah, I felt like all the kind of, let's say, big names were all kind of in on top of everybody else, maybe. They were maybe. doing like a wall thing. Oh, okay. Like they were on the outside wall. Which okay. was interesting because yeah. like yeah. in past years, it like someone like Capullo, who was supposed to be there this year, but unfortunately had to cancel. Apparently he was battling a pretty rough, he has a like severe asthma um, that flares oh. up every now and then. It's just completely debilitating. Uh, Cupola had to cancel, but like seeing where his booth was located Mm -hmm. and seeing the lines that he's generated in past years, I was like, how would that have worked? (laughs) Was there a separate area he was signing? Because like, it was pretty small. I remember you pointing that out. Yeah, like, and and even like like Otley, he typically generates a pretty good crowd at the like Mm -hmm. the beginning of the show because people rush to get his, especially now with Invincible ending. Like that's why um, David Finch was at a a break in the wall. Yeah, same with Liefeld. So his line could kind of like go around behind the area into where you don't know how the long line is going to be because you can't see it. Yeah. <laughs> Liefeld was the same. Same thing with John Romita Jr. Mm, they had yeah. his, like, off behind the wall, and they were kind of calling people up, like, as they go, mm-hmm. which makes sense, especially with names that, that big. Um, yeah, yeah. John Romita Jr. was a lot of fun to watch, too. He seemed yeah. to be really enjoying it. I was like, that's reassuring because mm-hmm. he's been in, in the business forever. <laughs> um, <laughs> I got to cut that line. I saw that. <laughs> I was with you. We cut that line to, to meet. Um, that was Bob Weissick. Yeah, yep. Oh, I might still pronounce his name wrong. But Probably. Uh, but, like, you know, he was positioned next to... Uh, Romita. John Romita Jr. Mm-hmm. And so, like, the break was set. No one would cut off Bob's table. Mm-hmm. So I could still get to Bob's table and not... And, Without like, having to, like, barge through a line <laughs> for Romita Jr. If I just slid sideways, like, three feet, I'd be right there in front of John. Exactly. I was next. I wonder if anyone would have caught me. Huh? That's me. But I'm an honest person. I wouldn't do that. It's true. Maybe. Maybe i do that. I was on that past. I traveled light this year. I traveled the lightest this year. Because <laughs> in past years, I typically don't really travel heavy because I hate taking trips to the car, mm-hmm. and I'm also painfully shy. So getting stuff signed for me is also 
sometimes an ordeal. It's awkward. Okay. Exactly. You're just and I I found that way too. The the one year I actually like committed and brought like a good chunk of stuff was our last year tabling at Boston when Guillory and Lehman were there and uh Joe Hill and um Gabriel Rodriguez were there from Lock and Key. Mm-hmm. Um Stephen King's son wrote a comic book. His name's Joe Hill. He wrote this book called Lock and Key, which I never shut up about. It's so good. <laughs> um and uh I brought a lot. I brought the smorgasbord edition, the big hardcover. Mm-hmm. Um, I bought a hardcover. I brought a hardcover. I bought a bunch of single issues from it. I, that was the one year because we had the table. I could just ditch it there. Yeah, you know, like That's it right. sucked bringing it in, but like I could just put it there. And then... I I brought a box on a on a wheelie, <laughs> but it was to leave at the table. Yeah, you left it at the table. <laughs> okay, you know? that's fair. But, I was uh, gonna say what? We, we could, <laughs> right? We, we just talked about like, this. You just said we could bring them. it in like as professionals or like as you know. Because we were tabling, exhibit. you guys right. got to go in early. Yeah. The so table, it's like... I think, would have been a cool thing. Maybe. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah was... I did like our car trip. You came yeah, out and so... you were laying in the back seat. <laughs> yeah, I got tired. <laughs> Jer frequently lays, lays down whenever, <laughs> whenever it's called for. Yeah, we have yeah. stories. We'll I've be, been known to lay down. We'll I think later. it's needed though. I think when I heard it's on from ten to seven, mm-hmm. I was like, oh god, you know, I was scared I'd be tired. But I think you once you have that break, like you need all that time for yeah. sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I needed that break in the car with some snacks yeah we sure. just we yeah. ate doritos and yeah. pretzels and just, pretzels with peanut butter inside and peanut butter yeah i was so surprised and just and just <laughs> chilled out it, yeah, yeah it was yeah. At, at first it's like this is a pretzel and now there's, there's something else it. there Blame Brett. He brought them. but yeah. they were i mean i was pounding them <laughs> yeah but, me uh, too. yeah but as far as like the trip like uh you know i packed light i brought um i brought one book to get signed I brought my my first or volume one of my hardcover of uh, Ex Machina Mm -hmm. because Tony Harris is Mm going to be there. And I remember Tony Harris was supposed to be there last year, but I think he had to cancel. Um, And I was super pumped because Ex Machina is one of my favorite books. I will never shut up about that book. Alex got (laughs) me into that book. Did you see the movie? Different. Different. Um, Damn. Ex Machina is amazing, though. Have you seen that movie? It's great. We watched it when Colin was here. Here when Colin was in Ireland last. That movie messed me up. It yeah. messed me up the other right? Oh my god, <laughs> I'm as, still messed up. As much as I like robots, I haven't seen it yet, but okay. I did just buy it on Blu-ray like last week. Did you? So, yeah. 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 Let really me know so. when you watch this so we can talk about okay. it. Okay. That movie messed me up, but uh, it's, I'll di- probably it's, be it's fine. different. The okay. comic is about a man who is in an accident and he can speak to machines. Okay. Um, and it's he like he it's, it goes back and forth between like his time as a superhero, but now mm-hmm. he's the mayor of New York, and like it deals like. A lot of implications with like 9-11 and things it it's amazing and it's and it's written by the comic we've been trying to get you to read all week uh saga it's written by the <laughs> same guy um <laughs> but the artist uh tony harris was there and um like i've i've said my piece about paying for signatures in the past i paid tony harris for a signature <laughs> um jerry almost threatened me too because it's a matter of like let me know when you go to tony harris because i want to come with you <laughs> And the, then the shy thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and there was a few instances of like, he's like, did you go to Tony? And I was like, no, did you? And I was expecting him to say, yeah, I've, my shit's already signed. I only did that with Jeff Darrow last year. <laughs> my silence. You got really quiet. Volumes. Oh, yeah, because he kept disappearing. Yeah. Anyways. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, once I saw Tony was charging for Sith and Truth, which I'm not going to fault him for, but I reduced the number of books I was going to get signed from four to three. It was five bucks, <laughs> five bucks for a signature, and it's my favorite, one of my favorite books. Mm-hmm. And I brought the hard, I was like, I brought the hardcover, I brought it to Boston. Mm-hmm. Just, just yeah, pay the good. man some money, <laughs> you know. Like, I would have loved to to have bought a. He was working on this one thing that Tony Harris and I didn't know this at the time when I got into him when I was reading like Ex Machina and stuff like that. He's an amazing painter, mm-hmm. um, and he was working like he 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 really can draw like real life or mm-hmm. paint like real life. And he was working on this John Snow painting. Like it just throughout the weekend or throughout the day that we were there, it's unbelievable. I was like, I wish I could just throw a lot more money at you, but unfortunately, I, I just cannot afford it. That was my thing too. Right. I really wanted to get a full piece, but I mean, my purse strings wouldn't allow it. <laughs> Did you? So. And then, how do you get that back home? Right. right. Yeah, so true. I'm limited too because I just have hand luggage this time. So, yeah. and I don't want it to get all creased. Did you leave the show <laughs> with like any names or any any people that you saw? Like, I need to see more of that later on definitely yeah but i think once i left i was like i really should have looked up a bit more about the artists right got the names got the comics they did because i felt a little bit you know lost in that sense so i wish i had done more of that which i will do 
for the next time. But I think if I get his name right, is it Jay Lee? Mm-hmm. Jay Lee, yeah. Jay yeah, Lee, yeah. excuse me. But I got a piece I think, from I him. I think you can honestly say it either way. I've heard it both. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, um, got a piece from him. I like his work a lot. Um, he does the Dark Tower, some of the Dark Tower, mm-hmm. right? So I think he did all of it, yeah. All of it? Okay. Sweet. I believe he, at least the covers. I think he did the the interiors too. Yes. But either way. He's amazing. Yeah, no, I was. <laughs> I wanted to get something of his early on, walking around. But as, as as I said, it took me about three hours to like decide on something. And I also think. find him too. Also yeah. find him, yeah, because I would get lost a lot. It was like the same. <laughs> yeah. It was like a yeah. So I got a piece of his. I got a piece of the gunslinger. Um, and who the other lady I got? So again, it took me a long time to decide. But I said I'm not going out of here empty-handed. <laughs> so I picked up on an artist called Ali Cat, and she drew me. A little yeah, bit you, got, you got a commission. God, that's my commission. So I got her to draw me um, a wee picture of Cordelia Chase from Buffy the Vampire Slayer. So <laughs> she did her in her style. So I was pretty happy with that. So I'm going to get a big super frame for that. <laughs> <laughs> so that was my pieces. That's yeah. what that was the funny things you were saying because the piece itself is what like teeny weeny two inch by it's like three yeah. by three or right. something yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like and I said to Jeremy I was like oh these little like the way she drew her shoes like her boots were like yeah. how I used to draw them as a child <laughs> so I was like oh but no I'm happy with her very make happy. sure you get like a big eighteen by twenty I want to get a big one next year. <laughs> Oh, for no, sure. I mean the frame for the... Oh, the <laughs> frame, frame. <laughs> I want to get a super big frame and then the teeny little picture. That's your first ever commission. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. So. Each commission, you can just add to it. That's it. Just put True. it in the yeah. same frame. Get them all the same size. Yeah, yeah. Just have every <laughs> artist ever. Paper. <laughs> can you do a three by three of this one woman? <laughs> <laughs> and just draw the boots in like different this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Different outfits, same boots. <laughs> Alternate between her and Spike. Yes. Oh, man. Uh, no, I'm I'm very happy with her. I kept staring at her. But then I said to Alex, I was like, I'm sure you don't think this is cool. <laughs> uh, did yeah. I prove you wrong? You now? did. Yeah, okay. you did. You did. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, uh, Colin's hyped me up a lot to Sinead. Oh, really? Uh, what well, has he? <laughs> Doesn't he like take pictures of my house and like yeah. send it? Okay. So I oh, have... I was thinking of the other way around. I heard it now. So like I have a lot of stuff and I right. I had all my missions to get stuff and to buy pages or get sketches or whatever. And so when you were like, oh, I probably don't think this is impressive. Right. Like I realized a little later on, which is why I made sure I found that page in my portfolio <laughs> of like a similar style, similar right. sized characters of Medusa and Crystal from the Inhumans <laughs> done like in this really cutesy fashion. That's yeah. Um, And like. Because the girl that I commissioned from, and this was years ago at, at uh, New York Comic Con. Mm-hmm. I don't remember how, how long ago. But uh, but that's what I wanted. I wanted this little small piece with like a really cute version. And I told her, I was like, do these, but in your style. Mm-hmm. And the reference I handed her like wasn't anything like her style, but I was like, this is what I want. Right. And uh, so, so yeah, your so, piece yeah. is just as good as mine. Yeah, well, even better. I mean, no, I'm kidding. But yeah, yeah Colin yours had... Yeah, in color. That's that's right. Yeah. Mine's in color. Yeah, mine's... Don't forget that. My, my cute one isn't. But Colin definitely had hyped... Is that there? Hyped you up to me. <laughs> that's, so yeah. much so that it was becoming a thing where you were a celebrity. And Colin was like... I was saying to Colin, I was like, I'm starstruck to meet Alex. <laughs> and there was also times, too, where... I would say something and he's like, you know what? Alex likes that too. Maybe mm-hmm. you guys. <laughs> <laughs> so it was becoming a thing. So it was funny. Boston in, I mean, they, they always have a great lineup at their artist alley. And, and while it was the artist alley seemed a bit, a bit small mm-hmm. for, for my liking, they should have made it to how I wanted it to be. <laughs> um, it, it was still, the, the talent was there, the names were there that we all recognize, and also mm-hmm. the people who we might not recognize. Yeah, there was stuff that I've seen in the past um, that I haven't seen at Boston recently yeah. that I picked up on. Um, and there were still new artists that I hadn't seen before that I'm glad I got to experience. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's a good like mix between old and new. Yeah. yeah. They do really well like as far as like the lineup goes. You know, I would have, on a personal level, I would have liked to see a little more space, maybe some, some wider aisles. <laughs> <laughs> I guess maybe I'm also used to Kineticon last month when you could drive a car down the aisles, <laughs> whereas this one was a little tighter. But um, I mean, as per usual, like one thing that I'm glad that they stick to is is getting getting good uh, or devoting, you know, themselves to getting good talent there. Mm-hmm. Um, vendors, 
a lot of vendors. What I saw that was new to me that I haven't seen recently other other conventions. Um, there was like some statue vendors mm -hmm. that wheeled in like case displays behind glass with lights in them and everything right, for right. statues, which like you ne normally don't see at a convention because now you're bringing in furniture and you have to pay for electrical and all that. Where it's like those are just charges that aren't mm -hmm. worth it. Like I will just set up my standee and put the boxes on it. So like having all these displays. Made me buy a Machine Man statue. So. <laughs> it made you buy it. Of course. It looks really good. I will say. It's a statue that I've seen, you know, a hundred times before. But I was like, well, the price is comparable to anywhere else I could get it. So I might as well get it while I'm here. Just get it while you're there. Mm -hmm. I still regret not picking up um, the Absolute Long Halloween. I could have got mm -hmm. it for $40 at Boston like five years ago. I bitch about it every day since then. But I was like, I'm, <laughs> what am I going to carry that? It's a big hardcover. The Absolute Volumes. So behind... We're gonna. There's a. There's a. Oh. All Star like, Suit Man right. over there. That's like, not too big. It's that's, a big hardcover. It's, it's pretty big. <laughs> you could have carried that. <laughs> that's in a slipcase too. For forty dollars, because they're normally like a hundred, hundred twenty-five right. ish. Yeah, that sucks. Um, yeah. But I will say, I, I was almost. I I want to say I was surprised, but I guess I can't be, at how much pop there was. <laughs> so much pop, pop vinyl, the little. The little pop figures, oh, okay. the guys with the big heads and the big right. eyes, like yeah, yeah. Um, everywhere. Just mm -hmm. and seeing the prices on some of these things, I was like, what yeah, what is happening with this? Everywhere, just people everywhere is pop vinyls. Signed. Yep, we mm -hmm. saw people have, getting them signed. Have John Rarman sign his Arrow Pop, I guess. Mm. Yeah, we saw uh, <laughs> who signed the pop. The Ryan Spider Man one. Yeah, Ryan Stegman. Ryan yep. Stegman signed it. One of the few sketches that you had acquired over the weekend. You're yeah, getting that a was Stegman. my only the sketch. The only sketch. Yeah. So you and Sinead got the only sketches of the weekend. <laughs> really? Yeah. In the past, I've gotten like nine or ten. This time, it was just the one. You, like, mm -hmm. There have been past years. I think the biggest year was Boston. The first year Colin Tabling? went. No, it was at the Heinz. It was the year oh. I got the... Lar Fleas and the Batman mm. from Canones mm -hmm. and like you, me, and Justin, like we were all just like, look at this sketch. Now look at <laughs> like we all had like multiple like we yeah. just threw money around, <laughs> and now we're all responsible adults with homes and yeah, stuff. It's, it's a different story. Um, now. But uh, I can't remember. Yeah, but pop figures. We we watched uh, Ryan Stegman got asked to sign a Spider Man figure because mm -hmm. he was on he was on uh, Superior Spider Man for a while. Um, and the kid had it in a protective case and everything. Yeah. yeah. Had to get the box out of the case. It's from the in a protective in the box in a protective case designed to hold the figure in the box because you don't. So, so the box won't get damaged. The box will stay mint. Right. You need the box oh to stay mint, God. obviously. <laughs> yeah. Clean corners. So I didn't know you were supposed to keep them in the box. Exactly. Yeah. I took mine out. I have an angel one that Colin got me. Good. And I took it out of the box, and I was like, hmm, maybe I should have kept it in there. <laughs> well, I wasn't sure. But pops were everywhere. Yep. There were also a lot of comics because I was, I was trying to spend money. <laughs> I was like, I want to buy a comic book. Like, Did you feel like you were too overwhelmed with all the stuff? Because that's how I felt. It was like so much of everything that I just sometimes like not nah, and just walked away. It wasn't so much overwhelmed. It's just knowing that because we're at a show, mm -hmm. like especially if I'm looking for a convent, like at a for a comic book, like I like to um I like to collect early Walking Dead issues because they're right. rare and they're mm -hmm. getting more pricey nowadays. And it's a series that I really like and it's something I can start aim for. Um, but everyone knows that people like me are looking for early Walking Dead issues. Mm -hmm. So they just, they annihilate the prices, um, which is, which makes it difficult. Like I can look through and be like, oh man, I really would like this issue, mm -hmm. but I could probably find that somewhere else for a third of the price. And it's just, it makes it tough to spend money. It's like, I want to buy this, but... I need to be a responsible adult because I need to get some gutters installed in my yeah. home. <laughs> I need to buy food. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. My wife would kill me. Well, I mean, I have these issues of, of a preacher now, but I can't eat for a few days. But exactly. You know, I mean, but, I, but now I have this thing. Worthwhile trade. It's worthwhile. I mean, but uh, I was like actively looking around, and I because now because now someone else can't own those issues. <laughs> just, just me. Just further cornering the market. <laughs> But so, I, that's how I think sometimes. Right. It's, and another thing, I just want to remind everyone that at Boston Comic Con, Colin and I gave blood. It's that true. That was another thing. Can we hear about that? That, that was not what I was expecting. <laughs> Basically, we had just gone and got like fizzy uh, sodas, 
And uh, we walked along. What, a, what, <laughs> fizzy, are, what are they called? A fizzy drink. Fizzy drink. <laughs> <laughs> I will have a fizzy drink, please. But um, they, we walked along and there was these ladies and they had swabs in their hands. They're like, hey, would you mind swabbing your cheeks for science? And when I hear science, I'm like, okay, well. <laughs> Obviously. Science. <laughs> so we were swabbing our cheeks 10 seconds. Or sorry, our, our face cheeks. For, um, not, not our butt cheeks, yes, <laughs> not of course. Butt cheeks <laughs> with the swab, and then I hear her t- say to Colin, "Hey, would you want to give blood?" And he was like, oh, "I don't know," but I jumped on that, and I was like, "Yeah, let's do it." So they were taking about a half a teaspoon of blood from our arm just to. I don't really still know what it was Apparently for, like which test is test on not, medications test or something medications. like that. Huh. And then about two hours later, I freaked out at what I had just done, and I was like, <laughs> "What did I do?" But um, I think it's all okay. We got our results back. <laughs> And I'm oh, dying, you? everyone. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> no. no, but that was interesting. Well, testing mm-hmm. is important. Yeah. Especially to find out if uh, if specific drugs are going to react to right. antibodies, like um, <clears throat> anti-rejection drugs. Mm-hmm. Right. For people that maybe have new body parts. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Which is crucial. Yeah. Like, because you're on those forever. Yeah. You don't want your body to kill your new thing, okay. like your lungs. Yeah. Or so you have your... to tell your body with pills, hey, man, maybe don't kill that thing, because <laughs> yeah. it's the only reason why we're alive. Right. Yeah. That's neat, though. So that was something. I get it now. Yeah. I didn't get it at first. <laughs> it's like, why are they taking people? <laughs> There's probably a clone of Sinead just being bred in a, in a lab somewhere. <laughs> but then that's not too bad. If that's the worst thing, then that's fine. I True. have a sister, even though... <laughs> I have one already, but now I have another. A sister that was born at the first convention you ever went to. <laughs> but now oh. she's being trained to kill a prime minister. So. Oh. Oh, uh, that's, that's, that's troubling. Is it my gonna... prime minister they're trying to kill? Because I think he's okay. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Is that what? See, I'm not even used to that. Ireland has prime ministers? Well, it's not what, actually. What happens over there? We, we talked about this when we first met. Did we? Yeah. A Taoiseach. So it's not, a, it's just my way of explaining it to people who don't know. It's the Taoiseach. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's like the same role as a prime minister. But we call him the Taoiseach, him or her. Um, so Are they he, a horrible racist monster? No, I think this guy, <laughs> oh, he just came in. He's, we have a great president too. But as I said, he's more of a figurehead. He goes, he doesn't have what I believe a lot of power over, you know, legislation, etc. But it's our Taoiseach who runs the country right right but our president is great i don't know if you've ever seen him <laughs> he's the cutest little man and he's he's <laughs> actually you know he was heavily involved in the arts and lived in galway so he's great but yeah no i think our Taoiseach is okay he's just recently been elected so i think we're okay i watch clisera on youtube mm-hmm. and she's an irish uh, youtuber <laughs> and so i get i would learn some things from her and then i would go to Sinead and be like so so how about the teachuk the, 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 tr- the tree chuck. <laughs> oh si- my si- and she's like, You're saying that's not it wrong. a thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was gonna spell it out, but it's impossible. Yeah. For an, it, is it? It's stu- not just T C H U K. For a stupid American, it's, it's nowhere close to what it yeah. phonetically sounds like for us. T A O Y S E A C H. That's not a. That's not a real word. I made it up. There's no way. And it, the best part is you could be. <laughs> you could, and I'd believe you, because what do I know? Yeah. Mm. Um, politics. How did we get there? Uh, drawing remember? blood. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I made up a fake story. Vendors. So that was that. And then Colin got a little bit unwell from that experience. Dr- taking blood, that, that it's, it's a takes lot. a lot out of you. And it was a big, busy, crowded room, and I think they should have had a bed put up in case yeah. of that kind of yeah. thing. It was, you know... So. Did you have to stand there? Or could you sit down while doing it? You sat down. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Standing for that <laughs> yeah. it would be kind of weird. Yeah. We were sitting down. We. But it was, if, yeah. if you haven't heard the story, so uh, real quick, I had to get tested to donate an organ, <laughs> and so for for all the tests to make sure that it was gonna work out, I believe I count was it forty one or forty two? Did I say? I can't remember. I think it's forty one vials of like the big no. testing. Yeah. Well, like oh. this, this is over the course of like six months. Oh, okay, okay. So it wasn't like at once. At right. once, the most was like six. You would die. Yeah, six, it was... six maybe mm-hmm. ten. Yeah, it was six sounds right. Mm-hmm. Um, but like over a few months, like you know, mm-hmm. go in every once in a while, and they take three or two or do another test or something else. Right. But yeah. Terrible. But I mean, like a half a teaspoon. Of <laughs> <laughs> half a teaspoon. I can cough at that. <laughs> so, <laughs> in regard to the thing we've been saying that. Sadly, we are we're actually over on time. 
and uh, our oh. time is very limited today. <laughs> um, but we have been hitting, like, as far as the thing that we were going to be getting to. Yeah. <laughs> we just don't even need to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> just skip it. I mean, the, the, the major cause for kind of like harumph and, and what is it, muffled cat- catawampus? <laughs> catawampus. <laughs> was the, the... The size. The size. Uh, so, so they were in the Super World Trade Center. Mm-hmm. And they were taking up every room possible, every like boardroom for panels and whatever, the entire show floor, like every nook and cranny of the show floor was taken up. There are rooms that we've never been to. The 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 like uh, concession area was upstairs yeah. and like mm-hmm. away from the thing. And then they get bought out by Fan Expo. It's so a new thing, new owner. They're going to put it in the BCEC. The venue is something like twice the size. It's a mm-hmm. huge place. So much room. We've seen it in packs. It's huge. Right. And we're like, oh, are they going to fill it? Like, what are they going to do? Mm-hmm. But, like, the prices didn't really go up. Um, some of the vendors and artists had a hard time the previous year because they were demanding, like, pay for their table for this year. But last year they were like, oh, if you want to guarantee. And so, like, there's a lot of, like, demand going on at the time. It's like, well, you're demanding a lot, like, right now for something that's going to go on in a year. And, like, a lot of it's not even confirmed yet. So we get to the bus commissioner. And um, they don't use all the space that's possible they use like a fraction of it mm-hmm. what was like one and a third of, a, of yeah. the hangers because there's three hangers yeah. if you want to call them that in the in the bcec pax obviously uses all of them the whole thing is open you walk into the lobby that there's your lobby you go down the escalators you're on the floor um at boston they were using like one of the hangers was just the the front one, the front most one, were like the escalators from the lobby. That was just closed. It was just yeah. closed off. I got a picture of it. I posted it on uh, <laughs> on Instagram um, and, and things like that. Posted on Reddit too on the on the Pax Reddit, and everyone oh, yeah. was like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> um, it was nice to know that I'm not alone and how fascinating <laughs> that was. And then the the second hanger was like for the queue line and like you know tickets. Mm-hmm. Uh, queue line things like that and then the third one was like the one of the larger ones because like the middle one's like smaller mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. the third one was where the show was mm-hmm. and it was just kind of surreal like it was it was taking it took a while for me to get over it because like the the the, the skyways the walkways um there's two of them yeah one of them was just shut off you couldn't get into it because mm-hmm. why would you need to because right. that's that would overlook the hangar that's shut <laughs> and the one that's just queue lines yeah the other one you could walk through, uh, me and Brett walked through it, and it, like, the shades were drawn. I didn't even know there were shades in that thing, because <laughs> w- when you're, a pa- apparently, someone on Reddit told me that when PAX shuts down for the night, mm-hmm. when they shut the show floor down, they draw those shades, huh. and I, I never even noticed. Um, but the shade, is like, Brett and I walked through, it was just like a dark tunnel. Yeah. Like, you could kind of see out of the shades, but it was just, normally, like, no you go there. No circulation either. Yeah, you, yeah, exactly. Yeah. stale. You take your pictures, and but the shades were drawn. So the it was kind of shut off. It was weird seeing like because like when you go to PAX, every aspect of the building is is alive. Mm-hmm. But like when we were there, there like some of the concession stands that we've eaten at in the past and things like they're just kind of they're gated. Like mm-hmm. no, this one's not open. Mm-hmm. You don't need mm-hmm. to go to this one. Go to the other one. This is the main food court. Mm-hmm. Like I tried to make my way around to the lobby, like the front main lobby. Yeah, so yeah. I was like, I want to see what it's like in there. Right. And Brett and I got really close, but then someone was like, if you go past me right now. That's no re-entry. So you got to go all the way around. <laughs> oh and I was like, no, thank you. <laughs> Apparently, that she had just finished telling someone this previous to me and Brett, who had a big problem with this, huh. and they were jawing at each other. <laughs> I was like, you're an employee, and you are talking back a lot. I'm just, in all my training, I've been told not to do that. <laughs> you you smile, and you let them say horrible, nasty things to you, and you're supposed to take that, because mm-hmm. they know that if you say anything back, you'll lose your job. They're in the city of Boston, so it's a different True. story. Right. True. But it was it was kind of... And I know it was very annoying with it because I'm such a such a Pax fanatic, Pax fanatic. Is that it? No. It was just it was weird being in that building. That like I I texted my wife. I was like, it smells like it's supposed to be Pax. It feels like it's supposed <laughs> to be, but it does. It, it's it, I'm at I'm at Boston, um, and I gotta say, like it was, it was crammed. Like mm-hmm. at no point could I, with good conscience, just stop and talk to a friend that I right. met. No. When I was walking through the vendor areas, like I ran into Bill the 1L and I ran into Carly Wynn. Yeah, that was and like, that, even like, seeing Bill, it's like, I got to go see you. <laughs> yeah. It's like if I want to stop and catch up with my friend who, like, we've taken pictures in the past because he's an R man when I would Mandarin, like, oh, mm-hmm. let's take funny pictures. And we would always have room and time to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas here, like, at no point was there an open space where we could just chat or catch up. Um, 
even when I was talking to Carly about like, oh, like, how about we do an episode in two weeks? Okay, bye. And uh, all you could do is shuffle and like maybe kind of like amble up to a table and kind of like stand next to a table because you're looking at something to buy. Um, There's a little more space because the artist alley area wasn't as crowded um, because people weren't going there to buy pops. <laughs> but it still wasn't big enough. Like another, you know, couple of feet would have been great because mm-hmm. you could kind of like walk down at like maybe two by two, but that's kind of it. Um, and even the the celebrity autograph area, like it was a big space, but there was a lot of lines there, mm-hmm. and there's a lot of people going back and forth. Um, so at, at no point it was busy. busy people traffic. walking past you the entire time. So at no point did it feel open. Yeah, mm, and. That's true. If you're gonna, if you're gonna promote your new show, because you were the Boston Comic Con, but now you're Phoenix Boston, and you're gonna promote your new venue, your new bigger thing that's better, it's bigger, it's more important. We're gonna we're gonna do it right now, but like you could have fit that show in the Seaport World Trade Center, that easily could have still fit in the Seaport, but they had the chance to take up more space and they didn't use it. Yeah. One of the, the theater was on the vendor floor instead of putting it in a panel room somewhere upstairs. There's a main theater on the third floor. Yeah. But it costs money to run. Exactly. Even any of the panel rooms, the smaller panel rooms, just put it in there. Yeah. Cause now the din of the vendor area and just the noise is gonna mess up their theater with the right. pipe and drape. Yeah. And, like and maybe I, you don't want that to echo out and so while you're trying mm-hmm. to make a sale and you've got the shadow cast for Rocky Horror or Doctor Horrible or something. Right, right. And I imagine there's there's probably a lot more to it than we know about as far as like logistics and costs and like mm-hmm. I who knows maybe the maybe the BCEC charges per per hanger if I have to like, pay another you, five bucks per ticket yeah to get double the space yeah. like I'll take it you know go if if they could tell me like well here's how much room we had last year and here how, how much room we'll have next year but the price is going up by 10 bucks like I if I'm getting more <laughs> so I I don't like to amble through a convention. I have goals and I have I have things that I need to do. <laughs> and if there's a slow wave of people in front of me, then I'm immediately frustrated. Right. Because I don't know how long Arthur Adams is going to be at his table. I don't know how long Phil Noto is going to be sketching for. It's uh, Phil Noto, he doesn't bring anything. To, he only brings like his paints. Mm-hmm. He doesn't have any comics or any original. Anyway, like <laughs> what I need to get to them in time and get to the car and come back in. Yeah. Because I, I have this urge to support the artists that I like. And if there's too many people in a way and there's a traffic jam of bodies, then I can't do that. No. Then why are you having a show in this huge venue mm-hmm. where you're going to cram it into like the size of a doormat? Yeah. I feel you. That's why it was great come half six or 6.30 when it was clearing out and you had the space. Oh, yeah. End of the day was, was like, fantastic. Oh, <laughs> it was lovely. I just walked around by myself. Yeah. I actually bought most of my things in that half hour I got some Mm -hmm. comics, some little statues in that half hour. So that was when people had been clearing out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm, I'm hopeful that next year they will, if they're in the same venue, they will utilize that space. Or maybe even if like, I mean, again, there's so much logistics that go into it, but like, you know, even paying a little bit extra. It's probably like Mm -hmm. super easy. just. But like, (laughs) It's simple to put on a show that of that <laughs> yes, magnitude. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm sure we could do it. Just, you know. But if, because you you could make the argument like, well, New York is only 50 bucks. Look at the size of them. Yeah. But then again, New York is New York. This is Boston. Who mm-hmm. who knows? Like unions and all that horribleness. That's probably just awful to deal with. But next year, I'm hoping maybe they uh they open it up a little bit more. Mm. I'm excited for next year. Utilize my costume, it. right? To get working on throughout the year. You just need to come visit for every show we go to. You got it because I feel to. like I feel like you would dig like each one of them. It just has that that neat thing about it that you probably dig. New York sounds great to me. New York is is terrifying. Yeah. Terrifying. Okay. No, no, it's not. <laughs> New York is. It's a lot of fun. It's one of those shows that I kind of just forget about every year. It's like, oh yeah, we're going to New York, and then when I'm at New York, I was like, I love New York. Yeah. <laughs> um, that sounds great. But they used to be like the one. You know, we would go to New York and Boston, and that was about it. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, I'm glad that you it seemed like you had a good, really good time. I had a really good time. And as I was saying before, like, it's an interest that I've had but didn't have a lot of opportunity to explore it further. So now that I've met you guys, it's a nice way to, 
you know, yeah, develop more that interest. More than enough opportunities. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to go home and like figure out what's around me. <laughs> and really, next time I see you guys, you know, I'll have all. That's like one of my next questions. Of like, mm-hmm. is are there? Did yeah. you take home any anyone's cards or like, um, like a a character that you saw? It's like, oh, I want to learn more about you know whatever this thing is. Like mm-hmm. maybe like a statue that was at. You actually Vendor picked up some comics the other day. I picked up some com- comics. are kind of what I want to be doing right yeah, now. Okay. Reading some more comics. I read, since I've been starting talking to Colin, I've read a lot more comics than I would have probably. Mm-hmm. So that's where I want to... I've got... When we were together the last day, we picked up a few comics. Picked up about five or six comics. Comic-Con. X-Men is probably my favorite. Mm-hmm. So I'm reading a lot more. Well, that's right. To, yeah. Like you I like, like X-Men a lot. The dollar bin diver or whatever that was. Which one? Right. Didn't you have like a few random issues of X Men? Right. Yeah. 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 So they were just random issues. They weren't in order. Mm-hmm. So sometimes that's some, those are the best. Some, I'm conscious of that because I like to. I want to see order sometimes. Yeah. I, I feel a bit <laughs> lost. So that's yeah. where I'm at right now. So hopefully the next time I come out, I'll be a bit more. Ah, oh, this is what happened here. And mm-hmm. <laughs> of course, this storyline. <laughs> yeah. She so comes that's back what like I'm excited genius. about. Yeah. <laughs> so comics is where I'm headed now. So. That's rad. Yeah, I'm Real. excited about it. So early in the season, early in con season, um, we were talking, and I said my goal is to try and buy some more independent issues mm-hmm. or issues from smaller time artists or maybe who don't have like a big name yet, and they're trying to like get their name out there. Mm-hmm. Um, so when I brought, I went to go find Andy Smith to get some stuff signed, but I left it in the car, couldn't sign God. it. <laughs> but I still bought what he had there called Dread Gods. That's coming out from IDW. And that looks really cool. He signed that for me because I bought that from him. Mm-hmm. And then uh, I bought the new Zodiacs. It's like a four-part series. They have all four from uh, uh, Joe St. Pierre. I told him I thought he was great in Captain America as Batroc. So that was really cool. Uh, he probably loved it. What? That joke. Is that the one that I'm supposed to kill you over? <laughs> yeah, we're ending this show. I didn't even I'm getting get angrier it. and angrier the more I think about that. <laughs> Oh, man, I there's didn't a, get the joke. There's a UFC fighter, <laughs> old UFC fighter, George St. Pierre. Mm-hmm. He's French-Canadian, I think. And he he was in Captain America, the Winter Soldier. He played that okay. villain at the very beginning right. of the movie that they just beat up and just kind of dealt with. We just watched that last night. Right? Crazy. On, on yeah. the boat, when they infiltrate the right. boat and he fights the guy without a shield, that's George St. Pierre. Okay. This guy's name is Joe St. Pierre, apparently. <laughs> and I hate you. <laughs> Thanks. That means a lot. <laughs> But um, sadly, we are we are very over, and I know uh, <laughs> uh, you and Colin have have many things to do before your flight out tomorrow. So um, I have to say thank you so much for 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 making time for us and for coming to the show with us. No, I'm and, so happy to do it. I listened to you guys at us home. Nerd and all that stuff like that. <laughs> no. That's got to be weird. <laughs> no, it's not. I felt so. <laughs> hey, just at met home. you guys. Let's all spend the night in the hotel room together. <laughs> I was saying that I had never been in a hotel room with five boys, so that was. <laughs> it's true we did play card games <laughs> we did um but uh no i had a great time i had a ball so thank you guys that that super. makes me super happy i'm, I'm i super. can't wait for next time i'm excited um, we we try to be inclusive oh super and inclusive and, and it's like... really great it's it's i was saying i couldn't i what's the word i can't speak sometimes but i was singing your praises <laughs> to Colin. and i you were so inclusive you made me feel so welcome part of the team i had a ball I had a ball. Well, it helped that you're pretty yeah. okay, too. Oh, thank you so yeah. much. Because <laughs> yeah. I was nervous to meet you guys. I was nervous, but you were made it super easy. Nah, you fit right in. So it was yeah. a lot you of fun good. for me. Yeah. It, was, yeah. it, was it was easy for us to hang with you. No, because so. that's great to hear. Because I my mom phoned me, and I was like, these guys are, like, so nice. Like, I can't. <laughs> like, I don't know. Like, it's weird. Like, Everyone they're so listening. nice. <laughs> There's your they're proof. Nice. <laughs> so thank you again. It was it was it was a great time, and mm-hmm. uh, I'm really happy we got to do this. And uh, big thanks to Colin. Uh, shout for being, out! For being, shout out to Colin. <laughs> he's okay. He's he's patiently waiting, uh, reading he some comics, to sit out. some Spider Verse. Yeah, <laughs> this is gonna be like a new episode to him. He has, uh, unless he's just been like <laughs> earing the door the entire the door. time. But um, it'd be funny if he just walked through. <laughs> <laughs> What's up? <laughs> new episode. Yosh. What are you talking about? Yeah, right. <laughs> he's got to drop a Yosh. But uh, Sinead, uh thanks again for coming on. Um, have a super safe flight, and uh, apparently we're going to see you again in November. November, yeah. Um, Ooh. right. That's what I'm saying. So let's get something organized. <laughs> I know. I'm already. We're already trying to plan like a D and D thing. I want, wouldn't mind having like a game night, like just play card games and stuff. I'm sorry, yep. but we're, you're not going to Rhode Island Comic Con. 
I'm not going to. Rhode Island no, Comic Con happens in November. Later. There's one Comic Con in November, and it's is called Rhode Island okay? Comic Con. We're not going to. We, we, no. We'll get into that a later Late, time. Later, much later. <laughs> later time. Yeah, just uh, not now. But uh, <laughs> we 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 do need to uh, to end. Unfortunately, <laughs> Sinead, thanks so much. Thank you guys. Super that fun. Was a lot of fun. Safe flights and all that. Thank we'll you. be seeing you soon. Um, so that's gonna do it for uh for us. That is. I almost said that's been able. I, I almost missed the outro completely. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm doing. So until next time, uh, I am Jr. I'm Alex. And I'm Shinny Boo. There it is. <laughs> and this has been uh, episode 283 <laughs> of Opinions. Yeah, you know, it, it's Sinead, by the way. Uh, episode 283 of Opinions May Vary.